How many of you here have had one of those moments in life where it's been like a eureka moment and it's changed the way you see life and probably changed the way you behave? I'm going to talk today about my uncharted uh, waters where I decided to travel not in the normal way of A to B, but from C to B. At this stage, if my daughters were here and they were, had been in their teenage years, they'd have gone, Mum, you're so weird, because that's how teenagers talk. They've actually, they've actually graduated on to be two beautiful young women, so I am now just weird in a good way. <laughs> Anyhow, back to C to B. I'm going to tell you the story of my working with people with cancer. And in this case, my big C to B and seeing to being. So where did this journey start? I'll come to that in a minute. But first of all, I want to start with a fact. This is a shocking fact. Did you know that 96% of spas in the UK will refuse to treat anybody with cancer? 96%. Shocking. So my journey started 15 years ago when I was the co-managing director of a hotel here. And I discovered that my spa therapists were turning away people with cancer. Yep, I was one of those 96%. I just thought, this can't be right. And I wanted to be able to welcome everybody in with open arms. So... You'd think normally you'd be able to go to a spa, you'd sign up, you'd take your loved one or yourself if you were going through cancer. And because spas are meant to welcome people in and make them feel more well, you'd arrive, you'd get your slippers and your gown, and then you fill in your form. And there it is, the tick box. Have you had cancer in the last five years? So you can tick no and wonder what happens, or you can tick yes, and you wonder what happens. And let me tell you now that 80% of the women I've met tick no, because they want to have a treatment. If you do tick yes, you're likely to see this. It's what I call the face of fear. And a therapist will look like that. Now, why is that? The simple fact is that therapists have been trained that massage spreads cancer. Let me repeat that. Massage spreads cancer. I can tell you now that that is absolutely 100% inaccurate. Massage can spread one thing, well-being. Okay? For sure, there are some contraindications that you need to consider. People who've gone through treatment for cancer, radiotherapy, surgery, chemotherapy, will have hypersensitive skin and they may be susceptible to bruising. In addition, if lymph nodes have been removed, you need to think about the touch because there's always a risk of lymphedema. But... I can tell you some stories in terms of some spas have actually turned around to one woman and she was told, sorry, love, I wouldn't touch you with a barge pole. A little knowledge can be a very damaging thing. Touch therapy was launched uh, and researched and it's a very different thing to a normal massage. The idea of touch therapy is that it's slow and gentle and the idea is that it brings you to that beautiful parasympathetic state where cortisol, cortisol levels drop and serotonin and oxytocin levels are increased. In simple terms, that means your immune's boosted. So it's good for anyone, especially anyone going through cancer or what is termed as beyond cancer, i.e. in remission. I found that people who are in remission are in fear of recurrence. They are still living with dis-ease. 
So how does, how does cut, touch, touch therapy work? So a normal massage, for those of you who've been in a spa, can hear all the blokes going, oh yeah, I've been in a spa. Um, a normal massage works like this. So this is an effleurage. It's a long, slow sweeping movement. Touch therapy works like this. We train in a contact between the therapist and who they're caring for. It's about a connection. About slowing down and catching the breath. And then there are slow, slow rhythmic movements. Flowing, gentle, calming. Reminds me a little bit of when my mum used to stroke my hair when I was upset when I was little. That lovely, calming, gentle thing, a space where you felt safe. The whole journey with Cancer Touch Therapy has been incredible, and I've had some really beautiful moments. I've worked with some incredible spas and companies who want to throw those spa doors wide. It's been incredible. So some of the incredible results that we experienced with touch therapy were we had, after we'd launched it, we had a, a man who'd come in who'd stuttered for 25 years, who didn't stutter for three hours after treatment. We've worked with the Mermaid Breast Cancer Centre here, and they've been sending people to us and finding that people, women and men, are coping much better. We've had couples come in, one living with cancer, and one going through cancer, who've both had the same treatment. There's been a closeness afterwards. It's been a hugely humbling and beautiful thing to experience. One of the most amazing moments through the whole of the training for me was when we went to train in a spa in January 2018. And on day three, the spa had arranged with the local hospice for them to come in and get people from the hospice to experience the treatment. That in itself is actually pretty life-affirming when you get a group, but this is where I met Jean. So Jean was 67 years old, never been in a spa, definitely nervous. She had stage four advanced cancer. She went into the spa room, and I'll never forget her face when she came out, absolutely beaming. Now, that should normally be the end of the story. But a year later, I went back to the same spa, walked into reception. Who's there? Jean. To be honest, that was a shock in itself, because I'd been told by the hospice manager that Jean had a maximum of a year to live. I went, Jean! How wonderful to see you. And we had a massive hug. And she turned to me and she said, the hospice have funded me to come here once a month. I've never felt better. I don't think I'd have been here if I hadn't walked into this space one year ago. It's been an amazing thing changing lives. People with cancer lose their confidence. They're brave, but they're living with fear too. When you ask somebody to come into a spa and help you open the doors to other people through, going through cancer, the gratitude and the joy is amazing. And we've also changed the lives of therapists who often work eight hours a day without taking time to catch the breath. My favorite moment was earlier this year. I'd been uh, doing some training in Bath, and as usual, we get women coming in to have the treatment. And this beautiful woman came in after she'd had the treatment, and she said to me, thank you. I feel like a goddess. The treatment was almost a spiritual experience. And what I learned is that my body isn't something just to be fixed. It's something that's worthy of love and care. So it's been a journey and a half, and I, um, I've, what I've discovered in my 57 years, whoops, is that I am not very good at being told to let it go. I think if something's fundamentally wrong and you have a choice to make a positive change, then you should get on with it. 
and think about what you do and ultimately what you leave as a legacy. What I can tell you is that sometimes takes what I call the pants of power. Now, I'm going to just demonstrate. <laughs> OK, they're on. <laughs> Thank you. What I can also tell you is that to date, we have changed lives. We've trained over a thousand therapists across the UK. As a result, over 10,000 people with cancer have been able to walk into a spa. 96% no. I'm not going to stop with my team until that 96% no becomes 100% yes. So, what has this journey of uncharted waters done for me? It's made me see the world differently. It's made me look at things in a different way. And I've moved from seeing to being. So what I can say to you is in life, sometimes to move forward, you need to take a step back and be still so that you can move where you want to and see where you want to be. Thank you.